Dear friends, uh, we will take up discussion on this uh, uh, CVP analysis. <coughs> that means cost, volume, profit analysis. Now it is in other words the basics of the marginal costing. As you all know, in your intermediate you would have studied what is marginal costing? Marginal costing is a technique of costing. It helps the management in uh, decision making. What is decision making we have been talking? Decision making is uh, maximization of profit. And since profit is the difference between sales and cost, if an alternative is concerned with uh, revenue, we will take maximization. Suppose I have three alternatives, uh, three products I am producing A, B and C from the same raw material. Now, I would be interested to maximize my profits uh, by selling the product which gives me the maximum profit contribution. So, whether to discontinue A or continue B or uh, like that. So that is called as uh, revenue decisions. Whenever the alternative uh, are concerned with uh, revenues, the decision is uh, maximization. And there can be cost decisions like make or buy, then it is minimization. But what is the marginal costing got to do with this? Marginal costing is a technique which assumes that there are only two types of costs. One variable cost, <coughs> another is fixed cost. So for marginal costing, we don't have any other cost, though practically you have other step variable cost, step fixed cost and all semi-variable cost, but so far as the marginal costing is concerned, it assumes that there are only two types of costs, one is a variable cost, another is a fixed cost. Second is, what is a variable cost? Any cost, if the per unit cost is same, that is called variable. For example, at 1000 units my cost is 10,000 and at 2000 units my cost is 20,000. That means cost per unit is 10, that is called variable. Variable means changing with production, but changing in proportion to the level of production. Proportion means per unit cost is same. So total variable cost is always B into X <coughs> where B is the variable cost per unit which is constant and X is the number of units produced. So therefore as the production goes on changing, the cost also changes in proportion to that. As you all know it is not by name you can say it is variable by behavior with level of production. Take the example of fixed cost, and the fixed cost is a constant, period cost, payable at the end of a month or year. It has nothing to do with the production. It is necessary for the production, but doesn't change with production. Take for example, as you all know, a hall of 100 students capacity are paying 10,000 rent. Whether one student comes or 10 students comes, the cost is same. But uh, this will remain constant till that 100. Once the capacity, capacity exceeds, then uh, you need a further a big jump in the fixed cost. And this is what we have understood at the lower level. Now first step I am going to explain you today by taking two problems. What is this uh, variable cost? What is this fixed cost? How does it affect the profit? That is why we call it as cost, volume, profit analysis. <coughs> In the first problem, I request all of you to go through that first problem. I will uh, It is a very simple problem, but I have taken it for explanation of the concept. In this, <coughs> we have given you budgeted sales, budgeted volume of sales, variable cost comprising of materials, Two lakh fifty thousands labor, variable overheads, but fixed overheads are not given, but profit desired is given. 
this is the so in other words fixed cost is a balancing figure so profit is given all the cost except fixed cost is given so you get it as a balancing figure it tells you two things that the volume increases by 10% it tells you that the volume increases by 10% and uh, selling price will increase by 4% and a reduction in all items of cost by 2% this is the problem and you also ask the question the management wants 23% return on investment advice this is the problem how do you go about understanding the problem to how will you go about presenting the problem many students think Solving the problem is presentation. That is where they do mistake in a professional exam like this ICWFC exams. Presentation is an art where you are trying to communicate with the examiner your knowledge based on the question asked. So, right? What is the issue? Issue already explained. Calculation of the profit in a revised scenario. Okay. Two things are given in the problem: <coughs> volume increasing by 10 percent, then rate changes. So whenever there is a volume and rate changes, first change the volume because change in rates will affect the entire quantity. So here the sales volume is increasing by 10 percent, and therefore. Uh, all the variable cost will increase by 10%. No change in fixed cost. Assuming that the fixed cost is within the 100% capacity. That point should be kept in mind. So we have seen 5 lakhs increase by 10%, 50,000 extra. 2 lakh 50,000 increase by 10%, 25,000. 1 lakh, then 10% is 10,000. Variable cost 40,000, 4,000. But fixed cost does not change. Fine. Then rates. 4% increase in sales applies to 5 lakhs plus 50. 5 lakh 50. So 4% is 22,000. Reduction in all items of cost. Here students may tend to somehow ignore the fixed cost. All items of cost means it includes fixed cost. So therefore, there is a chance of uh, error here. Therefore, 2 percent reduction in this 1200. So, you please adjust it, you will get the thing. So, please refer to the solution. I would suggest that you listen to read the problem. After I explain the problem, you please again read once again, start solving it. Then you please verify. Then you will find the subject very interesting. Okay. <coughs> Conclusion must be given. Conclusion is what? Whether the return on investment is going to be more than 23%. Uh, yes. So you say yes, the proposal should be accepted. That is where many students don't write conclusions. Finally, they are asking questions. Should we accept it? Yes or no? Why? What is the reason for your accepting or not accepting? We should explain. That is the first one. This is the first problem. So whole issues is one. Whenever there is an increase in volume and rates, first increase the volume and then rates. Two. Whenever there is an increase in volume, the variable cost will increase in proportion. 10% means 10% increase. Whereas the fixed cost will not be changing because of its capacity cost. But reduction in elements, all elements includes fixed cost. This is two. Second is present it in a detailed manner and uh, then give conclusions. So in the problem, mixed, mixed figure is also there, that's fixed cost. So you try to calculate. Better it's put the format, then you try to fill up the figures. You get the answer correctly. Verify it once again. So let's move on to the next problem. This is also CVP analysis basics. And in this problem, I request you to go through the problem. It is basically a flexible budgeted income statement computation. 
We have to compute the flexible budgeted income statement. So read the question first. Once you read the question, you will know what we should answer. And mostly by reading the question, you will be in a position to decide the format in which you can answer it. Put the format. Try to fill the figures given. And then apply the concept. You will get the answer. Sometimes the problem will be drafted with one uh, lot of unnecessary information. You should know how to eliminate the unne unnecessary information. And second thing is, uh, the problem will be uh, given in such a way that you tend to do mistake by missing certain things. So therefore, first step is read the question, decide the format, and wherever you get little doubt, wait. Once you solve what you don't know, you will automatically get what you know, don't know. So please do like this. In this problem, that 60% level sales is given at 144. And you are supposed to calculate, uh, fill up that for 80, 100, 120%. So straight away, if it is 60%, 140, at 100, 120%, it is 1, 2, like 88,000. So sales figure is filled. At 100% level, he gives certain relationships. Two-thirds of the sales is factory cost. And 20% of sales is administration expenses. Which includes 75% variable, 25% fixed. This is the problem. So you fill it up. 75% of 2,40,000 is 1,60,000. 20% of 2,40,000 is 48,000. So in that 75% is 36. Balance is 12,000. He has given you what's overheads? 33, 36, 40, 60. What's overheads are changing, increasing. But they are not variable. Why? Variable means they will change in proportion. So if it is uh, at 60% uh, it is 33. 120% it should be 66. Like that, that is called variable like sales. Therefore, at uh, 100% level, you are given 1,60,000 as the factory cost, which includes prime cost and works overheads. Works overheads is 40,000, given the problem. 160 minus 20 is 1,20. 160 minus 40, sorry. 160 minus 40 is 120, prime cost. Prime cost, you know, is a direct cost. It is variable. Variable means changing with sales. So sales is 240, prime cost is 120. That means 50% of sales is one prime cost. Students will do mistake in the problem by trying to find the same relationship at other levels. If you do like that, it means you don't know the concept. In a, the relationship given is at 100%. It will hold good only at 100% and not at other levels. Why? Because works overhead is not a variable cost. And fixed administration also is given, which is not going to change with level of activity. This point must be understood and explained. This is the concept. So now we are able to fill up 50% of sales is the prime cost. Fine. And uh, fixed overheads are 12,000, 12, 12,000 up to this. But friends, above 100% fixed overhead, we said it will increase. But nothing is mentioned in the problem. So you have to take only 12,000 and better put a note. Better put a note. The variable administration is given as 36,000 at 240. That means 36,000 divided by 240 is 15,000. Therefore, there are 15%. And therefore, 15% of sales is the uh, variable administration and fixed administration will not change. That's all. So here in this problem, I repeat, first step is put the format. First is read the question. The question clearly says that uh, we have to take the flex, prepare the flexible budgetary income statement. Flexible means at different levels of capacity. 
So format is ready. Format is sales, time cost, works overheads, factory cost, variable administration, fixed administration. Second, uh, fill up the figures given and try to fill the other figures based on that. And then you remember, explain that concept. The relationship given at uh, 100 is at 100 percent. We cannot compare the same thing at other levels because what's overhead is not a variable cost. Prime cost is a variable cost, therefore it is 50 percent of sales. We can take it and that's it. This is a very interesting problem. See actually when you get hold of the concept you can solve any problem provided you have the ability and patience to read the problem. The patience is very very important. Read the problem in the art of reading the problem very fast. Collecting the desired information will come. So slowly we can practice like that. I'll give you tips as we go with the problems. Now this is the first step. Now marginal costing or CVP analysis is based on certain fundamental assumptions. What do you assume? All the production is sold. There is no closing stock. What you produce, you will sell. But two, the variable cost and the selling price per unit will, I will go through a linear relationship. That means selling price per unit, variable cost per unit will remain constant. Three, total fixed cost is assumed to remain constant up to 100% capacity. This is the fundamental assumption based on which the marginal costing is fixed. Now I am going to take up discussion on fixed cost is assumed to remain constant. That is normal, we all know. But then there is some type of fixed cost which varies with the production. You go, go to a hospital. In a hospital, I may have constructed 100 beds capacity hospital. That means I can at a time I can take 100 patients. But how are you, how sure are you that always you will have 100 patients? So it's a seasonal business, and uh, now elections are coming near, so you'll be more active like this. But sometimes they may not be any patients. So what they do is, they identify their two types of costs. Fixed cost based on bed capacity. That is depreciation, equipment, all that uh, managerial stuff to run this will have to be fixed. This is fixed totally. There is another thing is nurses, uh, supervising nurses, staff. For, for 100 beds, uh, beds you may need, uh, uh, let's say, 50 nurses. But you cannot appoint 50 nurses and all. So what we do is we budget the range of activity. We believe this is possible. So that's called activity represented by patient days. Suppose level 1, here patient days, 100 beds, 365 days means 36,500 patient days. That is activity. But we may not get it, so I will say budget up to 10,000 patients, patient days. I will keep so much of stuff and pay this much fixed cost. Now all this, the level 1, level 2, level 3, like that I will fix it normally. So this is a problem. And uh, there are, now we have under identified that there are two types of costs, uh, a fixed cost based on bed capacity, and uh, fixed cost based on patient days. So how to compute break even point? If you assume the fixed cost is remaining constant over the range, then very simple. Any sales above break even level, you get profit. That means more the sales, more will be the profit. If <coughs> the fixed cost is varying over the range of activity, then you cannot come to that conclusion. 
you may be making profit at one, earning profit at one level, but the next level you may be incurring loss. This point has to be understood. In any final problem, if you are asked a question, calculate break even patient days, break even number of units. Don't think it is normal break even point where uh, fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. No. You have to remember that there is something in the problem where the fixed cost is changing, variable cost per unit is changing, like that. So now we'll go to this first problem. Uh, in this concept, it is third problem. Uh, in this what happens is that uh, the simple problem to explain the concept I put is uh, <coughs> level 1, 0 to 500 units, fixed cost is 5000. 500 and 1 to 1000 units, the fixed cost is 10,000. That means at 501 units, it goes to the second range, fixed cost increases by 5000. Contribution per unit is 15. Contribution per unit is 15. Cents. So, how to understand and solve this problem? Please remember, there are two fixed costs given in the problem. So, you can calculate two break-even points. So, for every fixed cost, every range, like fixed cost at every range can take one break-even point. Not on variable cost per unit changes, no, nothing will happen. It's a different way of calculation. But here, fixed cost changes. 5000 divided by 15, 333. 10,000 divided by 15, 667. So we have identified two break-even points. What does it mean? Multiple break-even points. That means 0 to 333 units, 0 to 333 un units, you are making profit. You are covering the fixed cost loss, sorry. 0 to 333 units, you are incurring loss, representing the uncovered fixed cost. You cross 333, you start making profit. At 500, in that range, you have made the maximum profit because the margin of safety is 167 units into 15, 2505. So at 500 units, you have profit of 2505. 501 units, fixed cost jumped to 5000s, jumped by 5000s, increased by 5000s. My uh, profit in my hand is 2505. So I have not. So I have again lost. Whenever the incremental fixed cost is more than the um, profit at that level, you will get a break even point, multiple break even point. If the fixed cost increase has been only 1500, then you won't get it. So from 500 to 667 units, there is a loss again. And then above 667, you get profit. That is what is depicted in the graph. We try to compare what happens when the fixed cost remains constant. One word answer is, higher the sales, higher is the profit. If fixed cost does not remain constant, then higher the profit, higher the sales, higher may not be the profit. That is the conclusion we have got. The same thing is explained in this problem. Four. In this problem, friends, uh, many times uh, when you have to calculate breaking a point, we need fixed cost, total fixed cost. We need selling price, we need variable cost. So in this problem, he has not given those figures. So first step is, we have to, in the problem 4, you have to calculate patient days, that is the activity. All problems are coming like 6, 7 problems have come. 11 lakh 38, 800 divided by 65. That is me, that is 17,520 patient days. Why? Why we should compute, compute patient days? It is for two reasons. The total variable cost based on patient days is given. You divide it by 17,520, you will get 15 rupees. So, 65 
revenue 15 where it will cost 50 rupees is contribution per unit first step one. Second step is fixed cost. Fixed costs are of two types. One is based on capacity, bed capacity. Another is based on patient days. That is nurses, supervising nurses, nurses and staff. So therefore, this 17,520 falls in the third range. <coughs> if you go through that, we need four supervisory nurses at 18,000 and 22 helpers staff at 5,000 and then 13 nurses at 30,000. So all put together, you will get 8,4,000. So 8,4,000 divided by 50, you get 16,080. But the problem does not end there. What is break even point? You should prove at break even point the contribution is equal to fixed cost. So you have got the break even point 15,820. It falls in the 16,080 patient days. It falls in the second range. We have calculated based on third range. And the difference is 13,000 rupees because one nurse less in range 2. So therefore, 13,000 rupees less means 8,4,000 minus 13, 7,91,000. So 7,91,000 is the revised fixed cost divided by 50 rupees. So you will get 15,820. That's the answer. So in the problem, you have to explain presentation number one. In this problem, we have, we have to calculate the break-even point. However, we observe that the fixed costs are of two types. One is based on bed capacity, another is based on patient days. And uh, uh, you have to explain that in this scenario, when the fixed cost is changing over the range of activity, higher the activity, higher need not be the profit. Next you say that from one level to next level, when the incremental cost, uh, fixed cost is going to be more than the profit already made, then only you will get the break-even point, multiple break-even points. In other words, going out of range. That's all. Let's take the discussion on the variable cost per unit does not remain constant. Normally, in the marginal costing, we assume that the variable cost per unit should remain constant. What is variable cost? Direct materials, direct labor, and uh, variable manufacturing ORS. Now, materials, if you take, as the quantity purchased increases, you can get quantity discounts so that the cost per unit falls. Labor also is subject to learning curve effect. The learning curve means that uh, if you do the same job again and again, the time taken for the successive jobs will come down. This is a peculiar uh, phenomenon to applicable to human beings. If it is a machine that does not apply, if the machine takes half an hour to do a job, next job same half an hour it will take. But in case of human beings, it is a uh, subject learning curve and uh, we have to recognize that. Suppose if you are taking 100 hours to do the job, then the next job may take 80 hours. So because of this, the labor cost starts falling. Since uh, variable overheads power is required per labor hour, the variable overheads also will fall. So, practically there is a possibility that the unit variable cost can change over the range of activity. In that case, how do we compute the break even point? You take the problem. In this problem, if you go through the problem, the fixed cost is given as 5 lakhs. Up to 16,000 units, the variable cost is 16 rupees. Above 16 and below 60, the variable cost is 17. And above uh, 
60,000, the variable cost is 20. So in other words, since the fixed cost is 5 lakhs, we have to show at what level of sales the contribution will be 5 lakhs. Because contribution should be equal to fixed cost. Now, what students should understand is that if suppose 20,000 units is the demand, what will be the variable cost? Up to 16,000 units, the variable cost will be 16. For the next 4,000 units, the variable cost will be 17. So that is the main issue of the problem. So if you read the solution, you find that zero to six, up to 16,000 units, the contribution will be 25 minus 16, 9 rupees. 16 into 9, one like 44,000. Above 16,000, but below 60. Above 60, below 60, that means 44,000 units. For 44,000 units, the contribution will be 8 rupees. 25 minus 17. So, 3 lakh 52 thousands. So, 144 plus 3 lakh 52 is 496. So, 4000 rupees is the short. This we can go above that 60. That means the variable cost is going to be 20. So, 25 minus 20 is 5 rupees. And you need 4 thousands. So, 4000 divided by 5 is equal to 800 units. Units. This is the position. So, in other words, at 60,800 units, the contribution will be 5 lakhs, which is equal to the fixed cost of rupees 5 lakhs. There is no profit, no loss. So, now we have seen that uh, variable cost per unit, which is assumed to remain constant as per the original thinking, if it changes, how it will affect the uh, profit we have seen. Now we are going to the next level. Uh, break even chart. Break even chart is a graphical repre representation of variations in costs and revenues in relation to variation in output. So if the output increases, what will happen? If the output decreases, what will happen? If the selling price increases, if the selling price decreases, this is what we are trying to understand in a chart form. But what we are more concerned in this discussion is that uh, there is an accountant's viewpoint to this break-even point. Accountant assumes that uh, the selling price is a straight line. That is, unit selling price is a constant. That is, one unit, 100 rupees. 1000 units also is 100 rupees. So, Whereas the economist doesn't assume like that. So economists believe that more can be sold only at a reduced price. So the economy, the economist is a practical thinking where higher the sales, higher the lesser will be the price. So the sales line will be curvilinear downwards. Then we assume that the variable cost per unit to remain constant the total fixed cost to remain constant. Because of this, the total revenue line will cut the total cost line at one point. Below that level, there is a uncovered fixed expenses loss. Above that level, you have profit, margin of safety. More the sales, more will be the profit, is the conclusion you draw from that sharp one. But in accounting, the economist doesn't believe like that. Because uh, the sales line will be curvilinear downwards. Whereas uh, the cost, what happens is if you buy a new machine, uh, if you don't produce up to a particular level, it is not useful. So there is a level above which you start making, gaining, and after some time the diminishing marginal returns work and therefore it will fall. So you find that uh, the curvilinear break even point you can see. So more than one break even point is coming in the picture. That is what we have recognized. Next we are going to discuss the multi-product situations. Computation of break even point in case of multi-product companies. What is this? 
Suppose if a company is producing a single product, uh, it's very simple because fixed cost divided by contribution per unit, that is break your point. Suppose if the fixed cost is 1 lakh rupees and the contribution per unit is 20, then we have to sell 5,000 units. But take the situation where you have a machine which can produce product A, also product B. The fixed cost is same, then how will you calculate this regular point? This is called as uh, multi-product situation. In a multi-product situation, we have to follow a constant sales mix. Suppose the sales mix is say 7 is to 3 and selling two products in the ratio of 7 is to 3. That means for every 10 units that I sell, 7 units will be A, 3 units will be B. This I should not change. So, in a multi-product situation, computation of break-even point depends on fixation of the sales mix. Because for every change in the sales mix, the contribution changes and therefore the break-even point. So, sales mix has to be identified. Sales mix to be identified in units. You can do it in rupees also, there is no problem. Sales in units is always, when it's given, you take it. If it is not given, sales value divided by selling price, you will get sales value, sales in units. So we take up the first problem, we have X and Y, selling in 7 is to 3. The contribution per unit is there, uh, 50 minus uh, 40, and uh, uh, the way with the product uh, Y, you have uh, uh, this, 40, uh, this is first one is 40 minus 24, 16. Second one is 50 minus 10 is 40. So first step one, calculate contribution per unit. Step two, calculate the sales mix. If it is given, you take it, otherwise you have to calculate it. Using sales value divided by selling price. And the third one is the total fixed cost. So break-even point is equal to total fixed cost divided by average contribution per unit. So in this problem, average contribution per unit is equal to total contribution divided by total units. And in other words, total contribution is 7 into 24 plus 3 into 40. 7 into 24 plus 3 into 40 is equal to 288 divided by 7 plus 3, 10. 288 by 10 is equal to 28.8. So, total fixed cost is 6,66,600 divided by 28.8. You will get 23,146 units. That's all. Now we can also verify that 23,146 units is sold in the ratio of 7 is to 3. So, you split that and calculate the contribution, you will find it is 6,66,600. So, it is equal to the fixed cost. So, I repeat, the main concept in this multi-product situations is, first is calculate the contribution per unit, next is the sales mix, average contribution per unit, total fixed cost and then total fixed cost divided by average contribution per unit and the last is verification. You have to check up whether at this level the contribution is equal to fixed cost or not. That's all. Now we are going to the next problem and uh, this is a, uh, I request you all go through the problem. In this problem, there are two products the company is selling, tape recorders and uh, electronic calculators. And uh, you are supposed to calculate the break-even point based on the data given. And also they have given you the data change in data. You have to take both into consideration and calculate the break-even point. 
same concept, but lot of data. In the first scenario, tape recorder sales mix we have to calculate. Step one. Contribution per unit is very simple. Selling price, materials, labor, variable overheads. So sales minus variable cost is contribution per unit. And uh, second step, total fixed cost is given for uh, tape recorders, seventy thousands. Electronic calculators, two lakh ten thousands. And then total fixed administration cost also is given. Total comes to thirty lakh twenty thousands. So step one, sales contribution per unit. Step two, you have sales mix. Step three is the average contribution per unit we have calculated, and step four is the total fixed cost. So you can calculate the break-even point, which comes to one lakh twenty thousand units. You can verify it, but uh, you, the difference between a first simple problem and this is a little extended problem. That's all. Now they have given you data where the tape recorders, electronic calculators. We have reduced the price from 22.5 to um, 20. So because of this, he expects the sales of electronic calculator. Um, Uh, the electronic calculator will increase by 80 percent rupees. That means if total revenue is 100 rupees, this is 80. So 20 rupees will be the uh, tape recorders in rupees, 28. And so we divide it by selling price, 1520. So 20 by 15 is 1.33, and the 80 by Uh, 80 by 20 is equal to 4. 1.33 is to 4 is equal to 1 is to 3. So we have calculated the sales mix in units, which is 1 is to 3. Second uh, step is there is a change in the selling price already. We know 15 and 20. Material cost is reduced 3.6, 3.6, and labor cost increased by 10%. The variable overheads will remain same because the variable overheads are recovered per labor hour, not as a percentage of labor. So there is no change in the variable overheads. So that means sales minus variable cost, you will get the contribution per unit. The fixed cost is set to increase by fifty-seven thousands, so thirteen lakh seventy-seven thousands. So the average contribution, ten point one two five. So that's equal to one lakh thirty-six thousands. That's all. So the summarized scenario is uh, in a multi-product situation, computation of break-even point depends on the fixation of sales mix. Because for every change in the sales mix, the contribution changes, and therefore the break-even point. This is what you have to highlight. So broadly, we have discussed uh, the basics of CVP analysis. A uh, little advanced level from what we have studied in intermediate or PCC whatever it is. So we saw that first two problems. Uh, that uh, what is CVP analysis? What do you mean by fixed cost remains constant? What do you mean by variable cost per unit remains constant? Then how does it affect the profit relationships? Next, we have taken assumptions of break-even point or CVP analysis and the limitations we have discussed. In that first, we have discussed the fixed cost changing over the range of activity. Then, variable cost per unit does not remain constant. Then, we have discussed the economist viewpoint of break-even point, curvilinear break-even point compared with the accountant's viewpoint. Accountant is a theoretician. Economist is an actual practical person. Then multi-product companies also we have seen. So whenever you get a problem on break-even point, you must remember one of these assumptions, if not all, are given in the problem. So now applications of marginal costing for decision making. When you take application of marginal costing for decision making, 
we have a product mix decisions, make or buy decisions, shut down or continue, marginal costing, absorption costing, differential cost analysis, advanced problems, taking into consideration all these concepts. So we are going to take up one by one. It's basically a concept. Once you understand the concept, and second step is you should improve the power of reading the problem and the next is answering to the questions. Reading the problem means the problem information in the exam problems will be relevant information, irrelevant information. You should have ability to eliminate the irrelevant information. That means you have understood the concept very well. And last but not the least is the presentation of the problem. With this uh, product mix decisions, application of marginal costing for product mix decisions or any decisions means segregation of total cost into variable cost and fixed cost. Always you should take variable cost per unit and the fixed cost in total. Please remember this point. Always marginal costing, application of marginal costing means segregating the total cost into variable cost and fixed cost. Always take variable cost per unit and uh, fixed cost in total. That is the basis. What is this product mix decision? Product mix decisions, if you want the definition, they are concerned with choosing a particular product or combination of products with a view to maximize the profits. Product mix decisions refer to choosing a particular product or combination of products with a view to maximize the profits. Fine. That means I am producing ABC. I want to know whether I should produce A or stop it, whether I should increase B, decrease C, like that. Let us uh, take this example. We have uh, last year produced three products A, B, C and sold thousand units each of these. And you find uh, the profit for A is 20, B is 15, loss and C is loss of 5. Now what should we do? The fixed cost is 10 rupees per unit. That is, the total fixed cost is rupees 30,000 and divide by 3000 units. 30,000 divided by 3000 is equal to 1000 units, uh, 10 rupees per unit. Now, a layman would like to think that A is giving profit, so we should continue with A. And B and C are incurring losses, so therefore we should discontinue. But uh, fixed cost, 30,000 will be there even if you discontinue B and C. So what is the use of taking fixed cost for decision making? So in all product mix decisions, fixed cost should be ignored. If you ignore the fixed cost, then selling price minus variable cost, 30 rupees is contribution plus A. So good. B, 5 rupees loss, negative and C, 5 is positive. So rule number one, compare variable cost, selling price with variable cost. In all product decisions, you do this. And if the product is giving, if the contribution is negative, discontinue that. So we have to stop B, because the variable cost is more than selling price. No discussion there. So A and C have a positive contribution, therefore we must continue. Let us say A is a bone vita and C is a uh, horlicks. If a customer comes and asks you, you give me some health drink, so immediately you will give bone vita A, because higher contribution. Suppose the customer insists only on horlicks, then you will give horlicks because it gives positive contribution. So first rule number one we understand. The product mix decision is the one which aims at maximizing the revenue, profits. By discontinuing the negative contribution, 
and increasing the products with positive contribution. The total fixed cost should be ignored because it will be incurred whether a particular product is produced or not. Because these total fixed costs are not product specific, they are general. Therefore, it should not be considered. Next scenario, we see that the key factor in all product use decisions, we encounter this key factor. What is a key factor? Anything which limits production. For example, there is a demand of 1000 units, but I can produce only 800 units. Why raw material is not available? Therefore, raw material is key factor. So you cannot take just raw material available uh, is plenty, it is not a key factor. So therefore, key factor can be raw materials in cages, uh, labor hours, machine hours, sales in rupees, sales in units, anything or a combination of that. So, you can see in this problem, product A is giving you contribution of 20, B is 30. Obviously, B is better than A, higher contribution per unit. But then, raw materials are required 5 and 10 kgs and maximum available is only 1000. So, when the contribution, when there is a key factor raw material, then we should take a contribution per key factor. Contribution per key factor. So, in this case you find A gives 4 rupees per kg whereas B gives 3 rupees per kg. Naturally, if you, you must spend, uh, you must put all the raw material on A. So, in all the problems of product mix, first step you should uh, decide is uh, identify the key factor. Identify the key factor. Then, calculate the contribution per key factor. That is also called as ranking. 3. Allocate the key factor on the basis of maximum sales. Allocate the key factor on the basis of maximum sales. Then calculate the total fixed cost. The total fixed cost is equal to budgeted units into fixed cost per unit. This will not change irrespective of the product mix and then overall profit based on your decision. Of course, you have to have some common sense. So, in this uh, first problem before you, I request you to go through that. The key factor is labor hours. The problem clearly mentions there are only 18,600 hours of labor. So, we have first calculated the uh, contribution per labor hour. So the step two is ranking contribution per key factor. Then we find that uh, C is giving 11 rupees per hour, B is giving 8 rupees and A 6.25. So A, C goes 1, B goes 2 and A goes 3 in ranking. So that 18,600 hours have to be allocated to C first. But then, the demand for C is just 1500 units. The demand for C is just 1500 units. So therefore, we can only allocate 3000 hours. What is of producing uh, more than uh, what we can sell? So the next priority, rank 2 goes to be 5000 into 3, 15,000 hours gone. So out of 18,600 hours, 18,000 is gone. So you have 600 hours. And uh, 600 hours you have to concentrate on A, which gives you 4 hours 1 unit. That means 600 hours by 4, you can produce only 150 units, even though the demand for A, you can see, is more than uh, demand for the A is over 4,000 units. So therefore, we have come and come to what's called as optimum product mix. In other words, this is the product mix that gives you the maximum profit in the given constraints. Then total fixed cost we have calculated 10 rupees per unit based on budgeted production. That's all. Now, what is the profit? The standard format, if you go through that, you have, uh, this is uh, A, 150 units into 25, 
B5000 units into 24 and C1500 into 22. So the total is 156,750 rupees. Less fixed cost, 60,000. So 96,750 is the profit. So we use the same concept. First step one, we identified the key factor labor hours. Step two, we have identified, ranked the uh, products on the basis of contribution per labor hour. Step three, we have allocated 18,600 hours based on the demand. And step four, we have calculated the total fixed cost, budgeted units into fixed cost per unit. And step five is the profit in a standard format. Make it very simple because you won't have much time in the exam. Now we are going to discuss this uh, uh, problem uh, where minimum and maximum constraint. You please go to the go through that tea coffee cardamom. All of you read that. So as usual, the problem moves, but the key factor is uh, area. The key factor is area. There is only uh, three, uh, totally 300 hectares. Uh, 200 hectares of uh, land, 200 acres of land, and uh, yield per acre is given. So first step is identify the key factor which is land in acres, it is not in cages. So therefore we have found out, if suppose you produce uh, tea only in one acre, you get 12,000 and coffee 13,500, cardamom 10,000. So accordingly we did the ranking. So whenever there is a minimum and maximum constraint, as a rule, first go for the minimum. Because you have to give minimum to all, whether it is loss or otherwise. Contribution is negative or otherwise also you must give allocation. So we have allocated uh, tea, coffee, cardamom, totally 160 is gone. Out of 200 acres, 156 is gone, means you have only 40. So we will put it on first ranker coffee. But coffee maximum given in the problem is 50. So we already given 30. So we can only give 20 more. 30 plus 20 is 50. So now still I have another 20. I will give it to T. So T goes to 140, even though 150 is there. And therefore, the 200 acres are allocated. So overall profit you have got and that is the 6,55,000. So once you get hold of the concept, uh, the problems will move just like that. Now let us take up a, a bigger problem um, on this product mix which has already been discussed elsewhere. And um, uh, students who are interested to go through further, we have put a lot of problems in our book. The, you can buy that book. Book can be purchased along with the DVD or uh, separately also. Thank you. Now we are going to discuss the application of marginal costing technique for make or buy decisions. Make or buy decisions are basically concerned with expenditure. Therefore, the object is minimization of cost. Take for example, I am making a spark plug. I have a big car manufacturing unit and I am making spark plugs. I have a separate division which is involved in manufacturing of these spark plugs. Now I receive an offer from Myco Industries as is willing to supply the required quantity of spark plugs. So, I have to take a decision whether I should uh, continue to manufacture the spark plug within my facilities or give a try, let us see whether they will be better off than us. Which means that all the things being same, we are interested whether the cost will be reduced. So, in this case, the make or buy decisions uh, are of two types. One is I am manufacturing the component. Now I am considering whether to discontinue the manufacture for some period and uh, buy it from outside. That is type 1 decision. I repeat, we are manufacturing the component. We have got all the facilities. And uh, now we are thinking we discontinue the manufacture and purchase it from outside. 
We are not going to close down the factory forever. We are going to give a try. Whether it is worth giving the outsourcing that. Second scenario is I am right now buying this spark plug from outside. I want to know whether it is better for me to manufacture it, that is create the facilities and go in for own manufacture. So both these decisions are concerned with expenditure. There is an outflow. If you are manufacturing a component, you are spending some money. If you are going to buy the component, you are going to spend some other money. Whichever is less, I am going to choose. That's why I said make or buy decisions are concerned with expenditure and the object is minimization of cost. Let me concentrate on uh, type 1 decision. Now uh, suddenly somebody comes and offers me to supply this power plex. So what are the considerations? The first consideration is non-cost consideration. Cost is secondary. Non-cost means I will I have to visit his factory and find out whether he has got the equipment to produce the desired quality. So I must be assured of that. Point number two, I may need one lakh pieces every week. Will he be in a position to supply that to me? Does he have a surplus capacity? What is his credit rating? These things have to be taken care of. Then I have to find out uh, well, what is my special problem. Suppose I have a labor problem in my division. Then whether he is not having that, so better give it. I have a power problem in my factory, then uh, he is not having power. He, his factory is situated in a place where there is no power for problem. So there are special problems which we have to evaluate and then take a decision. So first step is in this type of decision, whether they, uh, whether, are you satisfied with the non-cost considerations? Then yes, then you come to the cost considerations. For cost considerations, the position is, uh, suppose for example, I discontinue the manufacture and I am going to outsource it to somebody. Then what happens to that fixed facilities? The machines are going to be idle. Then if I am going to continue to keep them idle, then scenario one, I will feel incur the fixed cost. The fixed cost will be incurred, even if I go for buying. Scenario two, that facilities I can let out to somebody or I can use them to produce another product and I can earn some income. So in scenario 1, fixed cost will be incurred. In scenario 2, some income is derived. So in scenario 1, the facilities are idle. In scenario 2, the facilities are not idle, some income is derived. So in first case, when the fixed uh, the scenario is, uh, facilities are going to be idle, I have to compare the cost like this. Please uh, look at the problem number 12. Problem number 12, uh, example itself you see, cost of making the component is 15 rupees comprising of variable cost 10, fixed cost 5. Suppose the facilities are idle, then if the fellow is offering me 11 rupees, then I have to still pay 5 rupees the fixed cost, so total is 16 rupees. So in that case it is not possible for me, it is not feasible for us to go for outsourcing. Because in this case the variable cost uh, is lower, less than the purchase price. So the purchase price is the creaky factor in this scenario because fixed cost will be same in both the situations. Therefore, in, when the facilities are idle, you have to compare variable cost with purchase price. If the purchase price is less than the variable cost, you please buy. If the purchase cost is more than the variable cost, sorry, I repeat, if the purchase price is less than the variable cost, you have to buy. If the purchase is price is more than the variable cost, then it will be cheaper to buy, manufacture the component. So therefore, uh, the whole issue is, first question is whether the facilities are idle. Yes, then the total fixed cost will be incurred in both the scenarios. Ignore it. Compare variable cost with purchase price. If variable cost is 10, purchase price is 11, make it. If the variable cost is 10 and purchase price is 9, buy it. That's all. This is the decision. When the facilities are not idle, then what are you going to do? When the facilities are not idle, that means either you are letting out the facility to somebody, there is some income, 
or you are using that production to that facilities to produce another product therefore you get some profit from that some contribution from that therefore we should compare the total cost that is the present total cost in now with the proposed total cost whichever is less we have to take the decision this is the theoretical aspect of make or buy decisions in line with that i am taking up the problem you can go through problem number 13 Please read the problem 13. So in this problem, scenario one is machines are uh, uh, machines are idle, which means fixed cost will be cut. In that case, first step is you have to uh, split the total cost into variable cost and fixed cost. That is first step. In all marginal costing problems, you have to split the total cost into variable cost and fixed cost. so variable cost per unit in this problem is 495 if you are going to manufacture it the variable cost per unit will be 495 fixed cost is 180 so the total cost is 675 whereas the purchase price offered is 540 so the purchase price offered is more than the variable cost obviously it is not worth buying from outside so you can see that cost of manufacture is 675 whereas cost of buying goes to 720 that is the first portion of the problem in scenario 2 he says that uh, you buy the component at 540 then the facilities will become idle use that facilities to produce 90000 units of another product so the situation is in scenario a the facilities are idle fixed cost will be cut in scenario b facilities are not idle some income is derived in such case as i told you you should compare the present total cost with the proposed total cost you can check up you will see that if the component is purchased purchased from outside then the cost will be 720 and the total cost will be in rupees lakhs 720 into 90000 is 648 lakhs per 648 lakhs um is going to be the total cost sorry first step is the present cost of manufacture of the component is 90000 units into 60 675 so that is equal to 607.5 lakhs that means if you continue to manufacture it your cost going to be 607.5 lakhs now if you are going to buy this component at 540 and use the facility to produce another product then the scenario is as it are uh, if you buy it at 540 fixed cost is 180 so total is 720 so the total cost is 648 lakhs but there is some contribution from the sale of new product that is less contribution from sale of new product is as under 485 is the selling price material cost is 200 he says on the same cost basis means uh, labor and variable orates will be same so labor is 135 variable orates is 90 so the total uh, contribution that you going to gain is 60 rupees per unit or 54 lakhs so 645 648 lakhs a less 54 lakhs is going to be 594 lakhs in other words alternate to one that is you buy it uh, you manufacture the component 607.5 lakhs alternate to two if you are going to manufacture the component um, by buying the component out from outside it will come to 594 lakhs so it is better to opt for the alternate to two so in this problem Uh, based on the exact concept that I have explained, I expo uh, explained both the scenarios, and uh, uh, let us proceed further. Now, we are going to the type two decision. What is this type two decision? In type two decision, we are all now buying the component, and we want to manufacture the component. So, what is the main criteria? for manufacturing a component as you all know manufacture means fixed cost therefore we have to go for a particular demand unless you are assured of the particular demand manufacturing will not be useful say for example if i want to buy shoes will i manufacture i'll buy machinery and manufacture one shoe ridiculous nobody would be willing to do that whatever be your financial status but the same thing if you are going to make the thing and then sell the product and you find the demand is going to be good 
and then only you will think of manufacturing. So manufacturing a component must be determined by the demand. If the demand is more, then manufacture. If the demand is less, you should buy. So in all these problems, you will notice is what is called as indifference point. So between buy and make, you are now buying the component at 15 rupees. You want to manufacture the component, naturally the variable cost will be less. Let us say 10 rupees. So variable cost is 10, fixed cost, this purchase price is 15, but you have fixed cost. This fixed cost has to be covered. So that means for every unit you produce, you save 5 rupees. And uh, after that particular point, that fixed cost gets wiped out. And then the making will be cheaper. So always in this talk of problems, you will be asked to compute the indifference points. Let me explain you the problem number 14. Um, it is a shorter version of a problem. Here a component you are buying at 15 rupees. The component can be made on semi-automatic machine. The cost details are 6 rupees per unit variable cost, fixed cost 9 lakhs. Whereas the same component can also be made on automatic machine, the variable cost will be 5 per unit, fixed cost is 50 lakhs. <coughs> so, then the company is expecting a demand of 7 lakh units. Now you are asked to evaluate the proposal. So, situation 1, you are buying. Then semi-automatic, then automatic. It is like you are walking, cycle and scooter. So, a machine is, um, automatic machine has higher fixed cost, lower variable cost. So, let us first compare buy with semi-automatic. So, always uh, buy cost is given as 15 and the semi-automatic given as 6 plus 9 lakhs. So, therefore, uh, let X be the indifference point in units. As I told you, as the units sold increases, produced increases, then uh, from buying to uh, manufacture, the advantage will shift in favor of manufacture. So therefore, indifference point should be calculated. You can notice that the as 15x is equal to 6x plus 9 lakhs. So x is equal to 1 lakh units. That means, at 1 lakh units, whether you buy or whether you make it on semi-automatic machine, the total cost of manufacture will be same. Above that 1 lakh units, manufacturing of semi-automatic will be cheaper. Now, we can also compare buy with automatic. Then value of X comes to 1 lakh 50 thousand units. Then we also have compared semi-automatic with automatic. And uh, then we got 6 lakh units. So, how to analyze these three figures? First uh, indifference point is 1 lakh units. Second difference point is 1 lakh 50 thousand units. Third one is 6 lakh units. So the conclusion should be like this. Below 1 lakh, you should buy. Above 1 lakh, but below 6 lakhs. Above 1 lakh, but below 6 lakhs, you should go in for semi-automatic machine. And above 6 lakhs, you should go in for automatic machine. Then you may think, what is this 1 lakh 50 thousand? It's simply a comparison between buy and uh, automatic. That is why 1,50,000 came. So please note that the uh, conclusion must be clear, clearly written. What is the purpose of working these cost break even points? Uh, below 1 lakh units, buying will be cheaper. Above 1 lakh and below 6 lakhs, semi automatic should be considered. Above 6 lakhs, automatic machine should be considered. Since they are expecting the demand to be more than 6 lakh units, you must go in for purchase of the say, automatic machine. That is the conclusion. So friends, he, these two problems, that problem number 12 and 13 that are, 13 and 14 that have taken, are basically examples to explain the concept that I have actually taken up in the beginning. So, <clears throat> let us do one advanced, uh, go through the uh, one advanced problem. Problem number 15, problem number 15. In this uh, problem, it is a, in the problem I was asked several times. The question is, <coughs> issue in the problem, as you would have read, is the discussion is about, I am manufacturing Colgate paste and putting it in tubes and selling it. So there are two components, cost components are two. One is the empty tube 
another is the paste. The paste I am going to make, so there is no discussion there. But the discussion is about the MP tube. Whether I should continue to manufacture as before or should I give it to somebody else, outsource it. So, first and foremost step is up to uh, 3 lakh units, there is a surplus capacity. It clearly says uh, you have machines which can, which can be used to produce 3 lakh empty tubes. If you are not going to use it, it will remain idle. And above 3 lakh empty tubes, you are going to buy a machine which involves a cost of 30,000. Therefore, this situation has to be understood. Up to 3 lakh empty tubes, what are you going to do? Above 3 lakh empty tubes, what are you going to do? This is broadly the picture. The whole subject is this. <coughs> Up to 3 lakh empty tubes, we have to incur only, if you are going to manufacture, we have to incur only the variable cost of empty tube. There is no fixed cost. And if you are going to buy, you just have to pay 1.35 per empty tube. So up to 3 lakh tubes, what is the variable cost? If the variable cost is less than 1.35, you make it. If the variable cost is more than 1.35, you buy it. The problem is simple. Now, the crucial factor is calculation of the variable cost. For example, I am manufacturing uh, Colgate paste and uh, as well as empty tube. Suppose I outsource that, then the cost of empty tube will be saved. The savings in that cost of empty tube is the variable cost. So, first step is we have to calculate the uh, variable cost of the empty tube. Here you go wrong in the problem, everything is gone. That is the important thing. The concept is pretty simple. Uh, that is, if you have surplus capacity, fixed cost is not relevant. So, compare variable cost with purchase price. So, what is the variable cost of empty tube? He says that one carton contains 24 tubes. 108 rupees is the cost. That means per tube will be 4 rupees 50 paise. Suppose I discontinue the manufacture of empty tube, and 90 paise I am going to save. 20% of 4.5. Second, labor cost 72 rupees divided by 24, 3 rupees. 10% is 30 paise. And most crucial thing, is, thing in the problem is all overheads. All overheads means includes fixed overheads also. But we are interested only in the variable overheads. So how to separate it? So all overheads are 54 rupees divided by 24. That is equal to 2.25. Less fixed overheads. Fixed overheads are allocated fixed overheads. 4 lakh 50 thousands given in the problem. 4 lakh 50 thousands divided by 3 lakhs is equal to 1.5. So 2.25 minus 1.5 is 0.75. 10% is saving. Therefore, variable cost of empty tube is 1.275. So, in scenario 1, the variable cost is 1.275 empty tube, whereas purchase price is 1.35. Therefore, making the component will be cheaper. Situation 1, over. Now, when you cross that 3 lakhs, when you cross that 3 lakhs, the total cost will be 1.275 plus fixed cost of 30,000. That is the total cost of manufacture, which must be compared with buying, that is 1.35. So that means the indifference point comes into play. So let x be the indifference point, then the value of x is equal to 4 lakh empty tubes. So that means up to 3 lakhs, we have to manufacture. Above 3 lakhs and below 7 lakhs. Above 3 lakhs and below 7 lakhs, that means 3 plus 4, here there will be a confusion. So therefore be very clear, above 3 lakhs, buying is cheaper. That as the demand goes on increasing, up next 4 lakhs, that means above 7 lakhs only, making will be cheaper. So the question before us is, what are you going to do if the demand is 3 lakh empty tubes? 3 lakh empty tubes is make. What are you going to do if the demand is 3 lakh 50 thousand? There are three options. 3 lakh 50 means 1 make, 2 buy, and 3 make 3 lakhs and buy 50 thousands. That is the correct answer. You all can verify this is the cheapest alternative. Similarly, 4 lakh 50 thousand means up to 3 lakhs make it and uh, 
one lakh fifty thousand you can buy it. So students can verify the answer, and that is the basic conclusion. It is a very, very important problem. Please go through that. Now we have to prepare the overall profit statement at different levels: three lakhs, three fifty, four fifty. Selling price per cube is given. Variable cost of contents which we have put there. Please note that variable cost, total cost of making is eight point two five. Total cost of making is eight point two five, and the empty tube is one point two seven five. Therefore, the difference will be the variable cost of the contents. That is the paste. And variable cost of empty tube is the one point two seven five. Purchase price is also given as one point three five. Fixed cost will remain same. Remember, fixed cost does not change because the thirty thousand you should not consider because we are not going in for manufacture above three lakh empty tubes. So this is the problem. Let's take the topic on differential cost approach for decision making. What is this uh, differential cost approach? With reference to this particular chapter. approaches to decision making we can make it into two types one is called as full cost approach another is called as incremental cost approach what is this let me give you an example a machine can produce 20000 units the capacity of the machine is to produce 20000 units now take this uh, example where If I am going to produce 10,000 units, the revenue is 60,000, cost is 30, so the profit is 30,000. Fine, 10,000 units, I am getting profit of 30. At 15,000 units, I am getting a profit of 35, because the revenue is 90, cost is total cost is 55. When I go to 30, so I must go, I must produce 15, 10 to 15. But at twenty thousand units, my profit is only thirty-three thousand. So there is a decrease in the profit. So if you are asked to ask a question, what will you do? At ten thousand units, you are getting thirty thousand profit. At fifteen thousand units, you are getting thirty-five. At twenty thousand, thirty-three. So I will choose only fifteen thousand units, even though there is a capacity of twenty thousand units, because the profit is maximum. So in a full cost approach. we are comparing the total revenue with the total cost and the alternative with maximum profit is considered fine the same thing that we can present it in differential cost approach let us see at 10000 units i am getting a profit of 30 so i want to cross to the next level 15000 units so that means 10 to 15000 the revenue is increasing by 30000 60000 sales is going at 90 whereas the cost is increasing by 25 so there is a net surplus of 5000 in other words i am already getting 30000 at 10000 if i go further i will get another 5000 so i should now the next question is shall i go to next level 15 to 20 Yes, if you go, the incremental revenue is 30, but the differential cost is 32. So through two through 2000 is lost. That means whatever I am earning till 15, as a result of the appreciation, I will find 15 to 20. My profit is reduced by 2000. So in other words, in the incremental cost approach, you continue 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20, 25, so long as incremental net revenue is positive. that is the concept so in a differential the same conclusion we are getting in both the scenarios we should produce only 15000 there is no difference but how we are approaching is totally different so in a differential cost approach we are comparing the incremental revenues with differential cost and so long as the alternative is positive we should take it up that is the basic concept that we should keep it in mind now let us take this uh, <coughs> simple problem uh, problem number 17 so i request uh, the students to go through the problem is a lengthy problem first issue in the problem is the there are 35 salesmen in the problem 
and there are five areas. I am producing the product in Chennai, but I have to sell it in Bangalore, I have to sell it in Hyderabad, Cochin, like that. They are called as sales areas. Now, there are out of 35 salesmen, in the first year, we have put equally seven salesmen per area. It's mentioned in the problem, the sales penetration, if you see the problem, you have to put five salesmen in every area, there is no discussion there. 50% market penetration, that is every area maximum sales are 10,000 units. 50% will be 5,000. If you are going to put one more salesman in that area, 58% will be the market penetration, 5,800. So therefore, the likeliest demand is given depending on the number of salesmen that are increased. So, the sales manager has uh, first in the first year allocated seven salesmen per area equally. Then he finds that the total profit is 1,75,000. That is, seven salesmen means in area one, 6,500 units. Contribution is 10 rupees per unit. How do you get that 10 rupees? 100 rupees is the selling price minus factory cost 80 rupees minus variable selling cost, distribution cost. So 100 minus 80 minus 10, 90. So the contribution is 10 rupees. So 6500 into 10, 65,000 rupees. And uh, salesman salary at the rate of 8,000, 7 into 8,000 is 56,000. So the profit is 9,000. As the uh, area 2, area 3, area 4, you find the area 4 and 5 are nearest to the factory. That's why the variable distribution costs are less and the contribution per unit is 16 and 18. Okay. The sales manager thought that uh, area 4 and 5, if you sell more, there will be more contribution. Therefore, in the second year, he has allocated uh, 5 salesmen in area 1, 2 and 3. That is basic penetration we have to get. So basic penetration, 5 salesmen means that uh, 5, 5, 5, 15 salesmen gone. Out of 35, 15 gone means we have 20. So he has allocated equally in area 4 and 5, 10 and 10. Because he thought that contribution per unit is highest in these two areas. But we surprise the profit has fallen from 175,000 to 165,200. He is doing good, but unfortunately the profit has fallen. So he has come to you and he wants to know why the profit has fallen. That is the issue in the problem. So all of you please refer to statement 1 where the, the 7 salesmen per area are given and this area of profit, area wise profit statement in uh, year 2 also was before you. Now we have to explain to the sales, uh, the sales manager that the way in which he allocated is, uh, is not uh, scientific. How? We have 35 salesmen. And uh, he has to allocate 5 salesmen per area. That leaves uh, uh, 25 salesmen out. Uh, 35 minus 25 means only 10 salesmen. So the sales manager has only 10 salesmen at his discretion for allocating any area. The salary of the salesman is 8000. Suppose I am sending a salesman to a particular area. Minimum I expect he should get me more than 8000. The contribution the incremental contribution that he should generate for me should be more than 8,000. Otherwise, what is the point in allocating there? Suppose in area 1, I'm, if I allocate 9,000, he will get. Area 2, 10,000. Then I will first allocate to area 2. That is the basis. So, in other words, the approach followed by the area sales manager is not correct. We have to take into consideration the only 10, 10 salesmen at our discretion and allocate them based on the contribution they are generating, incremental contribution they are generating, which should always be more than 8,000. So, we have uh, to compute two statements. 
Uh, the statement 1 is uh, called as total contribution statement. You please refer to this uh, total contribution statement. Uh, number of salesmen 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Units sold are there. And contribution per unit also is there. <coughs> In area 1, 5 salesmen will give you 50,000. And area 2, 60,000. Area 3, 70,000. 80 and 90. Similarly, 5,800 into 10, 58,000. 6,500 into 10, 65,000. So, what you see there is the total contribution statement. Students should be clear. Suppose if 5,000 units are sold in area 2, you will get 60,000. If 5,000 units are sold in area 4, you get 80,000. 5,000 into 60. So, first, uh, be clear on the computation of the total contribution statement. Now, we are concerned about incremental contribution. What is this incremental contribution? Please see. In area 1, let us take 5 salesmen I put. I have to put. There is no discussion. So, I put dash. I put one more salesman. 50 has become 58. That means there is an increase in the contribution by 8000. This is called marginal contribution or incremental contribution. Suppose, for example, I am going to send a salesman there. His cost is 8000. He is generating 8000. What is the use? So, therefore, similarly, we are going to the next uh, <coughs> statement. In A2, we have uh, 60,000. So, we see that in uh, area 1, uh, any salesman above 5 is not useful. But in area 2, we find that 9,600, 8,400 and uh, below that. Area 3, 11,200, 9,200, 8,400. Area 4, 12,800, 11,400, 9,600. Area 5, 14,400, 12,600, 10,800, 9,000. So students must watch the incremental contribution. The first salesman will go to area 5. We have 10 salesmen. And I am going to first allocate the first salesman. We will go to area 5 because 14,400 is the incremental contribution. Then I will next salesman will go to area 4. 12,800. Like that, uh, next salesman again area 5 and uh, yeah, like that anything above uh, this thing 8,000. I have identified the marginal contribution which is more than 8,000 and then round it. So you find in area 5 we can give 4 salesmen, area 4 3 salesmen, area 3 2 salesmen, area 2 1 salesman. And that means that 10 salesmen have been allocated. In other words, in area 1, we will give 5. Area 2, 5 plus 1, 6. Area 3, 5 plus 2, 7. Area 4, 5 plus 3, 8. Area 5, 5 plus 4, 9. And you can also verify, if area 1, 5 salesmen will give you 50,000. Area 2, 6 salesmen will give you 69,600. Area 3, 7 salesmen will give 91,000. And area 4, 8 salesmen will give 113,600. And area 5, 9 salesmen will give you 136,800. So that is the total contribution. So overall profit statement is before us. And that is 461,000 contribution less salesman salary. So the total profit that we can make is 181,000. That is the maximum profit we can make. We will take up the discussion on shutdown or continued decisions. The application of marginal casting for shutdown or continue. It's basically the business is passing through bad times. Depression. Depression means uh, fall in the selling prices and also fall in the demand. And this is only a short term phenomenon. It cannot be there for long. A three months or six months maximum in a year. Now the management will be confronted with whether to continue the operations, incurring the operating losses, or close down the operations and reopen later when the business picks up. This is uh, this decision is called as the shutdown or continue. Now, if you close down, 
the operations for a particular period and reopen it later, there are some other non-cost factors also must be considered. These are, uh, say, when you close the business, you lose your goodwill. Your customers will go to your competitor. Therefore, that is a big loss. Second is, you may have to uh, replace a lot of employees and uh, that may have a bad impact on the organization. And when you have to recover, when the business is recovering, we will not know the exact time of recovery if you are in the business. And therefore, uh, it is always preferred that you should try to continue the operations. And uh, close down the operation to reopen later means you are going to maintain the machines, you are going to keep the skilled staff, some of the important staff and pay their salaries. So you still continue to pay the fixed cost, but only it will be lesser. So shutdown or continue basically comparing operating losses uh, with uh, uh, the closing down costs. And uh, mostly uh, the advice is uh, unless it's going to be a big loss, we would like to, we should continue the business. This is basically the discussion, the concept wise. Now I have uh, taken the problem uh, before you, a lengthy problem and uh, and this problem is problem number 16. Uh, here uh, a company is producing the same product, say for example it's Rexona soap. It is uh, being produced in factory A, factory B, factory C located at three different places. And uh, the product that is produced is sold in the entire country. Now uh, factory A there is some problem because the rent is going to be increased. Now the question before us is uh, whether to uh, continue the operations at factory A bearing the increased rent to close down factory A so that he says that assets will be equal to liabilities and that uh, production, increase the production of factory B. So you have a system now, alternative 1, close down factory A, continue factory A. Two, close down factory A and increase the production of factory B and so you will have B plus C. Similarly, close down factory A and increase the production of C. These are the three options. This is a decision making problem so the presentation becomes very very important. And the first step is, in the first page I would suggest that you have alternative 1, continue the factory, refer to working note. Alternative 2, discontinue factory A and increase the production of B, working note 2. C, discontinue factory A and increase the production of C. Conclusion, whichever is more profitable, you take it. So that is first page. Second page, you have continue statement showing continuation of profits, factory A. Put the profit statement and also give any notes, observations. Same thing, third page, fourth page. So the whole problem will be solved in four pages and that is uh, uh, called as a better presentation. So let us see how we are going to deal with the problem. So here first step is, let us prepare the statement of profit, continue factory A. And in this uh, statement, if you could see that uh, sales minus variable cost, you get contribution. And contribution minus profit will give you fixed cost. Please calculate fixed cost as a balancing figure. Don't try to compute and waste the time. So here, presently factory A, we are getting a profit of 20 lakhs. If the rent is going to be increased by 12 lakhs, then you will end up with a profit of 8 lakhs. So contribution is 107 lakhs, profit is 8 lakhs, though the balancing figure is 99 lakhs with the fixed cost. In the same manner, the uh, factory B and C also is computed. Finally, 148 lakhs will be the profit if you continue the factory A paying the increased rent. Next scenario, alternative 2. two. What are the issues, uh, adjustments given the problem? Uh, we are going to close down factory A and increase the production of B. The most important point you should remember is when you are increasing the production of B, the variable cost that is applicable to B must be considered. You should not take the variable cost of A and add it to B. That is a vital conceptual mistake. 
So therefore, um, here what is the imp uh, increased output? Three uh, three lakhs divided by three seventy five. Selling price is three seventy five, and you have three hundred lakhs. Therefore, eighty thousand units will be the uh, output that is going to be increased in B or C. And increased cost in plant B. Uh, additionally, he says that. Uh, freight charges will increase by 20 lakhs, 80,000 into 25 rupees per unit. Additional fixed cost is 50 lakhs. These are the basic adjustments we are going to introduce into the problem. So here the variable cost of factory B will be 1012.5 lakhs. That's what is given there. You can see. So the factory B sales will be 1500 lakhs. Variable cost will be 1001 1012.5. Additional selling overheads treated as variable cost 20. So the total variable cost is 1032.5. Contribution is A minus B. That is 467.5 lakhs. And uh, additional, fi the fixed cost is uh, present to 310 and 6, 160, 470. Additional fixed cost is 50. One more important point is the when factory A is closed, there will be uh, head office overheads. And all these overheads are basically allocations. Even if factory A is stopped, still uh, factory B uh, and others must pay the managing director salary, etc. Therefore, even if it is not said, you have to take uh, unabsorbed uh, end of these overheads of A for 12 lakh. That is a vital point. In other words, two mistakes can be expected from the student. One mistake is the variable cost. Another is the forgetting the end of these overheads. So we have got 155 lakhs. The same manner we have done factory C, and that gives you 170 lakhs. So we have to put the summary in the first page, and uh, conclusion should be take uh, uh, increase the production of factory C. So close down factory A and increase the production of C should be the right answer. I'm going to take two advanced problems which uh, comprise of all the adjustments, uh, problem 17 takes into consideration all the adjustments discussed so far, namely product mix decisions and uh, make or buy decision, uh, pricing in a new month, surplus capacity and overall decision making. So let's go to this problem number 17. So please read the problem detailedly. What is the issue in the problem? See, in this problem, the company has uh, uh, machine, machines, group of machines, which can produce uh, 10,000 hours, which can work for 10,000 hours. The machine currently is producing bottles. With slight modification, by spending some fixed cost, we can produce bottles also. And uh, the bottles uh, selling price is 50 paise per bottle and 20 paise is the variable cost and per hour we can make 100 bottles and uh, the toys also can be made on the same machines uh, then the question will be the selling price will be 3 rupees per unit and the variable cost is 2.4 and we can make 40 bottles per hour there are two types of fixed costs given the problem one is 2 lakhs, it is a general fixed cost. And general fixed cost is to be ignored for decision making because it will be incurred whether you produce bottles or toys. But specific fixed cost of the 20,000 must be considered because if you want to produce toys, we have to buy the mold and whose life is for one year and the 20,000 will be written off over this year. So first question before us is, as you see the question, if the management predicts for the uh, demand for bottles requires uh, bottles will be higher than its ability to produce. So he is asking a question, if the demands for bottles going to be unlimited, are you going to put entire 10,000 hours for bottles only? So this is a product mix decision. So you have a choice between bottles and toys. Constraint is hours. So, in all these product mix decisions, as I already explained, the basis for decision making is contribution per key fact. Here, contribution per hour. So, you have to look at this statement worked out. Contribution per hour is bottles 30 rupees and toys is 24. 
So obviously we are going to consider toys, bottles only. <coughs> so we have to present it like this. We have to explain, first step is, uh, if the demand for bottles is going to be unlimited, we should produce only bottles because of higher contribution for our as shown below. And you must also specify that fixed cost, general fixed cost will not be, should not be considered. But specific fixed cost must be considered if you have to consider the toys. That is the question one answer. Question two, he says that suppose the demand for bottles only requires 7,500 hours. And that means you are left with surplus of 2,500 hours. Should you accept the toy offer? Friends, in a surplus capacity, there is no fixed cost. And so far, so long as the overall profit is going to increase, we have to accept this. So in a surplus capacity pricing, you are driven by an increase in the overall profit only. So here you see the toy offer is also for 1 lakh pieces. Ours is bottle 7500, toys is 2500. Units contribution per hour and uh, fixed cost, so the overall profit 65,000. So by accepting the toy offer, the overall profit will increase from 25,000 to 65,000. Hence, we must consider the toy offer. That is the conclusion. Third question is make or buy. He says that he has located a person who is willing to give you a uh, make the toy offer, give the toy to a uh, 2.8. Whatever be the quantity is willing to give you. Now you are asked whether to make or buy. As we already discussed, whenever this question comes, skin difference point comes. So the equation is like this. You want to buy 2.8x. If you want to make 2.4 plus 20,000 rupees the fixed cost. And therefore the value of x is 50,000 units. In other words, if the demand is more than 50,000 units only, we have to go in for manufacture of toys. That is expressed in hours, that is 1250 hours. So, it is very clear, we will consider manufacturing the toys only if the hours required exceeds 1250 hours. So, we have already answered three issues uh, in a short form. By product mix, straight away answer is contribution per key factor. Surplus capacity, maximization of overall profits. Then make or buy, the demand plays the crucial point and the uh, indifference point is to be computed. Now the last important point is D, which takes into consideration all the issues. See friends, they have done a market research and they, the market research consultant says that uh, 1600 hours, uh, 8400 hours will be uh, required for producing bottles. Then nothing more. So, we produce 8,40,000 bottles. Out of 10,000 hours, 8,400 hours are uh, exhausted for bottles. So, 1,600 hours I will give it to toys and I can make 64,000 toys, 6,600 hours into 40. That means the toy offer is for 1 lakh units out of which 64,000 is produced. That 36,000 units we are going to give it outside. So you find our profit is 77,600. Now he asks you, he asks you the question that the market research consultants have made wrong prediction. Instead of 8,400, there it is actual demand came to 9,000 hours. If that has been told before, what you would have done? That profit that you would have earned, the difference is called prediction error. Friends, you must remember this is a very important point. When 9000 hours are allocated for bottles, you are left with 1000 hours. But it is mentioned in part C that uh, producing toys will be pro profitable only if it is above 1250 hours. Hence, you should ignore the entire 1000 surplus hours. Then you will get a better answer. So the entire toy offer must be given outside. So you will find the profit is 90,000. So the prediction error is the difference between 90,000 and 77,600. So 12,400 is called as the prediction error. Mm. We are now taking problem number 18. 
this is also an advanced decision making problem so the presentation should be uh, in the manner already explained so please go through that problem it is a product miss decision the issue in the problem is uh, the profit statement given shows uh, uh, that um, product c uh, is incurring a loss of 52 lakhs product c is incurring a loss of 52 lakhs now we are just thinking whether to continue with product c or not that is the issue uh, here the uh, first point that a student should observe is we should not take profit as the basis because uh, the total profit will be incurred even if you drop C. Hence, we would like to look at the problem saying that well, let us continue C. Whether it is giving you positive contribution or not, we have to see. So, statement 1 which we are going to prepare is which will be restructuring the present uh, statement in a marginal costing fashion and uh, let us go to that you can see that sales of uh, A, B, C, D 1200 lakhs then there is a variable cost material labor and all that is there and uh, contribution is positive for all 474 lakhs friends you don't need to find fixed cost in all such problems because profit is given as 24 lakhs and uh, uh, contribution is 474 lakhs so 474 minus 24 is 450 lakhs that is the fixed cost so in other words we are representing uh, the statement given the problem so if the pro pro we have to continue C the profit will be 24 lakhs and um, second he is given a chance totally discontinue C what are the implications of discontinuing C one the fixed cost will be reduced by 20 lakhs that means 450 will become 430 ok second C will not be there take it out and another point he says is A and C are sold in conjunction uh, to the extent of 50 lakhs that means it's like a bone vita and a cup suppose if bone vita the cup is not there the party may not buy the bone vita here 50 lakhs of A will drop because of it drawing C totally from the market and uh, uh, you can notice that uh, 350 from 400 you are reduced to 350 similarly a proportionate reduction in the variable cost so you have a contribution then he says very clearly if C is not there the sales of B will increase by 100 lakhs so take that factor into consideration in other words you have to read the problem very clearly and note down that if you discontinue C what are the implications one Fixed cost will increase by 20 lakhs. We write it separately. Sales of A will reduce by 50 lakhs. Note it. And sales of D will increase by 100 lakhs. Take that factors and you find the overall profit is going to be 43.5 lakhs. Another situation is you don't want to disturb A sales. Therefore, you produce C only to the extent of 50 lakhs to be sold in conjunction with A. In other words, C is not sold as C. C is sold along with A and therefore when C is not there in the market D sales will increase by 100 lakhs. That is a very important point in alternative 3. So we have taken up that into consideration. The fixed cost is going to be reduced by for 10 lakhs. So profit is 63.5 lakhs. So now our conclusion is going to be alternative 3 should be considered because the profit is maximum. So friends this is a, again a problem which has three options one continue factory continue product C working note one 24 lakhs profit here you must express clearly that uh, uh, fixed cost allocated should not be taken as the basis fixed cost should be considered in total because even if say C is withdrawn fixed cost attributable uh, fixed cost will not reduce relating to C and that point should be emphasized in, uh, with regard to alternative 2 and 3, adjustments play an important part. And uh, in alternative 3, you will be confused because C is there. How can these sales will increase? C is not there. C is there if a customer wants only C, he won't sell. If a customer wants A customer wants C, 
it will be sold together. That is the crucial point which student may go wrong. So therefore, that's all.